In this video I'll be taking a detailed look at another piece of electronic junk and reverse engineering it. Now I like pussy cats, but I don't like what comes out of their back ends, especially when it's all over my garden. It's a health hazard and it stinks. I've tried all the usual deterrents, but they just keep coming back when I'm not around. In a moment of desperation, I stupidly turned to technology. You should never trust technology. It rarely ever matches up to the claims, and it's never on your side. Anyway, so I bought one like this, and I stuck it in the flower bed and waited to see what happened. Nothing happened. The bags of poo were undeterred by this gadget. It clearly wasn't working, so I brought it in for some reverse engineering. It's a green plastic unit, approximately 145 millimetres wide. It's a maximum of 94 millimetres front to back and 50 millimetres tall. It has elongated holes in the back for hanging on a wall or it can stand on top of a stake. It's got a nice big solar panel on top. A glass one, not your cheap plastic one. It measures 88 by 69 millimetres. And it's got 11 sections, 11 big sections, and a little runty one here. From the front it looks a bit like an owl's face. The front panel is dominated by two 35mm black concave diaphragms. Between them is a, a white plastic PIR um, detector dome and just above that is a rather insignificant little red lead. I've seen variations of this unit which are made to look like owls. And in one variation, it's got one black eye and one white one. The latter, it's a red, it's a, a lead flood lamp. To get it apart, you just undo these four screws on the bottom. And the screws themselves are minuscule, but at least they're magnetic, which helps. They're tiny little things, look. Easy to lose. Inside, there's a battery pack, a circuit board, and only one transducer. See, that's a dummy. This is a con. It actually is advertised as having two ultrasonic transducers, but there's only one. The board just pulls out. Damn the focus on this thing. It just all pull, just all pulls apart like that. The battery and transducer plug into the board. But the solar panel is wired on. Like it's an afterthought. I'll, I'll just desolder these wires because they're in the way and they're going to get broken. There's space for another socket here which is for the lead flood lamp which isn't fitted in this version. The pads for the solar panel are right next to each other, so I don't see why a socket couldn't have been fitted. They just haven't. There's plenty of space. Uh, you know, why they fitted sockets for the battery and the, the transducer, so why not fit the third one? If it's for cheapness, why not just omit them all? Why why bother putting two things on sockets and not the third? It just seems mad. The, uh, the on-off switch is a bit shonky, so you never know whether it's properly on or whether it's, it's, oh, it's, it's behaving itself now. They are, look. You never know whether it's properly on or whether it's going to stay on. It's really, really shonky, this. Now it's given up on me altogether. It's a single-sided board, sort of 
packs of light coloured, light packs of in sort of material. And uh, some, it's single sided with um, some dub uh, through all components on the top. And most of the gubbins is, uh, is on the bottom here. Um, surface mount devices. So looking at the top, you've got the uh, on off switch, the passive infrared sensor, a few capacitors, a, the red LED that comes on when it's activated, the sockets, and the inductor as part of the um, ultrasonic. On the back side, you've got the uh, the Schottky diode for charging the the battery. Um, the PIC, which is the heart of the system, the 3.3 volt regulator, um, a couple of transistors to drive. That one drives the ultrasonics, and that one drives the uh, um, the flashing LEDs, which aren't fitted. So they fitted these components for nothing. It's funny, isn't it? You leave this out for cheapness, and yet you still fit this. At least they've marked the connections, battery negative, battery positive, and the LEDs, and the speaker positive and negative, and the sun for the solar panel. And uh, strangely, there's a naught-ohm resistor there. First a quick overview of the circuit, then I'll have a look in more detail. The unit is powered from a 4.8 volt, 300 milliamp hour, nickel metal hydride battery which is charged from the solar panel via a Schottky diode. There's no overcharge or discharge over discharge protection. The heart of the unit is a, an 8-bit pick which is powered by 3.3 volts from this regulator. The pick monitors the output of the passive infrared sensor, drives the LEDs and generates the ultrasound signal which drives the transducer. The AS412 passive infrared sensor is a sophisticated device with an on-chip oscillator and a bandpass filter which allows the device to re detect infrared variations in the range 0.44 to 7 Hz. This rejects both the slow changes due to clouds and the fast changes due to mains frequency modulation of light sources. The output pin is normally low when, uh, when it's idle and it switches to a high of 3.3 volts when movement is detected. The on time connection is fed via a voltage divider. Uh, and the voltage on this pin relative to, to VDD determines the length of time the output stays high after it's been triggered. There are 16 possible settings, and in this case it's VDD times 0 0.069, which should give an on time of 5.4 seconds. Uh, the pick runs until the output of the PIR sensor has been low for at least 5 seconds, so the minimum activation time of the unit is around 10 seconds. Turning to the output side, the GP0 output of the PIC feeds the anode of the onboard LED via R5, which is a 1K. This is the LED which pokes through the front of the device and lights up when it's triggered. The GP1 output of the pick feeds the base of Q2, which is a J3Y silicon NPN transistor via R6, which is 1K. The emitter goes to ground. The collector goes via a 20 ohm resistor to the LED minus pad. The, this is the, um, the LED which flashes on and off at a slow speed when it's triggered, which isn't fitted in this unit. Um, there, are, there are holes for a socket marked LED, but it's not fitted. Note that this output pulses on for about half a second and off for about one and a half seconds, 
which I guess is supposed to be deterrent for the animal. The GP2 output of the pig feeds the base of Q1, which is another J3Y uh, general purpose silicon, via R7, and it has a pull down of 10k. The collector goes to the one end of L1, and the other end of L1 goes up to the positive supply. I forgot to mention the on off switch. I, I did. I drew it in as an afterthought. Um, the, the speaker itself has no DC continuity. It's a piezo device with a capacitance of around 121.5 nanohenries. Oh God, get this right. 121.5 nanofarads. And the inductor is about 100... Um, what does I say? Nan microhenries. That's it. This should resonate. The, the inductance of that and the capacitance of that should resonate together to give around about 44.7 kilohertz. The output frequency here is stepped about around about two seconds per step. And the steps are approximately 27 36, 45, 55 and 64 kilohertz. And the output of the pick is a 3.3 volt square wave, but a roughly sinusoidal signal of up to 11 volts peak to peak is developed across the transducer. Um, no, not across the transducer, from emitter to collector there. Um, this varies with frequency. At some frequencies, it's quite a rubbish waveform. Um, with the battery down to 3.9 volts, the 3.3 volt rail only measures about 2.87 volts, which is a bit low considering this is supposed to be a low dropout regulator. But with the 5 volts on there, it measures 3.3 volts. Now, on a, on a 5 volt supply, um, it consumes between 33 and 66 milliamps, depending on what frequency uh, is running. It, it takes the lowest current when it's nearest to resonance. And it, interestingly, it consumes 3.3 milliamps when it's untriggered. So the que you know, question drain is 3.3 milliamps all the time. And that's because this uh, regulator consumes most of that. The, the, the pick itself isn't taking very much, and neither is the um, PIR sensor, which is only taking 15 microamps. So why do I call this a piece of electronic junk? Well, the first thing is, this solar panel here is only generating 0 0.5 milliamps in the brightest sunshine. It's about 60 microamps in, the, in dull weather. It generates 10 volts when open circuit, but very, very little current. So it's faulty, and the thing was only outdoors for three months. Whether it was faulty in the first place, I don't know. But, you know, not very good quality, is it, if it, if it never really worked properly in the first place? The second reason is, I think, if that was a good solar panel, this battery would be overcooked in the sunshine and it's of a small capacity so it really wouldn't supply this unit for many um, activations uh, and the 3.3 milliamp quiescent current is just not it's just too much for this little battery another reason I think it's junk is the on-off switch is so unreliable you just don't know when it's turned on and when it's not and I think the 3.3 volt regulator is not not the best specified for the job. It takes far too much quiescent current, considering the fact that this is quite a pokey, quite powerful regulator, and yet the pick itself doesn't take much juice, nor does this, so it doesn't need to be such a highly specified regulator. There are much better ones with a, a much better dropout performance and a much lower quiescent current. 
I think this stepping of the of the output signal, holding it high for you know holding it at one frequency for two seconds and then moving on to another frequency over quite a long or quite a wide frequency range. I don't really think that's the best way to scare a cat. It really needs to be a, be a more alarming sort of signal and with more of a frequency variation. I do like the PIR sensor. I think that's a, quite a cool device, that. Incidentally, the current drain of 3.3 .3 milliamps over 24 hours works out around about 80 milliamp hours that, that the uh, solar cell has got to supply just to maintain it. And because of the Coulomb efficient, the um, charge-discharge efficiency of the battery, um, that means you've got to actually supply around about 130 milliamp hours from the solar panel. Now, I don't know about this solar panel, but typical solar panels probably give about 35 to 45 milliamps in sunshine. That means you've got to have at least three or four hours of bright sunshine just to maintain the quiescent drain um, which you're just not going to get in winter and that's besides any activations that the thing might have and it does get plenty of activations per day which is probably why it just cannot work it, it doesn't it might be okay in bright sunny places but in the UK where we're in shade half the time and the sun's weak and there's hardly any sunshine anyway it just won't stay working and this is another reason why I class it as junk. It was advertised as having two transducers. It looks like it's got two transducers, and yet this one's a dummy. So, yeah, another con from China. Well, congratulations if you've made it this far and haven't fallen asleep yet. I've probably done this thing to death, so I'm going to give up now. If you like this video, Please give me a thumbs up, a like or whatever it's called, and uh, I'll see you again in the next video. Bye!